What is up, everybody? Eric here from Team Tobacco. I am doing this live stream a little down and dirty today. I am using my cell phone because my uh, computer didn't want to cooperate with me, so that's where it stands at the moment. So there you go. Um, let's see. I'm trying to get into this on my computer and and then I'll be able to see everybody's uh, chats, and then all should be well. All right, there we go. Found the chat log, so we are good to go. Yeah, for some reason, so I have a USB hub on my uh, computer because I have two computers on my desk. And I just don't want to have two sets of keyboards and mice, so I have a like little USB switch that I use. And uh, for whatever reason, I went to restart my computer, so you know everything would. I just have a fresh restart, and everything would run okay, and I wouldn't have any slowdowns and anything like that. But nope, it uh, decided. Yeah, I don't want to recognize your USB hub today, so <laughs> that is kind of what happened. Um, so hopefully everybody will realize that I am live. Uh, I just found it online, so hopefully that is good. And um, we'll see. Uh, hopefully, is the sound fine? That's what I'm questioning. Hopefully it sounds all right. What's up, Shirley Will? All right, so today I'm actually just lighting up. This is my own personal blend. Uh, it's called the Innkeeper uh, because it has kind of a um, breakfasty type of profile. It has kind of a coffee and cream with uh, some chocolate in there and a bit of toast uh, and a little bit of cane sugar. So it's kind of like a nice little breakfasty type uh, type of flavor. So, I call it the Innkeeper. It is a um, six country blend. Um, it is, man, I, it's been so long since I rolled these. This one was actually rolled August of 2016. So, it's been sitting around for, you know, three years since I actually rolled it. And the tobacco was about a year old when I rolled it. So, it's got about four years of age on it now. I know the countries, I just don't remember specifically which leaf it is. I have it written down because you gotta keep your recipes. So it is Nicaraguan, Honduran, Dominican, Colombian, Brazilian, and actually, no, there's no Nicaraguan in it. It's Dominican, Colombian, Brazilian, Honduran, and then it has a Connecticut wrapper, uh, sorry, a Connecticut binder a Connecticut broadleaf binder, and then the wrapper is actually a Cameroon wrapper. So um, that is what I'm working with. The Cameroon wrappers, um, I get I get all my tobaccos from Leaf Only. Uh, the Cameroon wrappers are kind of small, um, so you can't get huge sticks out of it. I'm surprised I got this size out of one. Uh, it's really hard to get a leaf big enough to roll. I don't know how big this is, probably about a six and a half, maybe seven. So kind of Churchill size, it's kind of hard to get wrappers that big, which is fine because I like Robusto size anyways, so it works out. So that's tend to, it tends to be the wrapper I like, and it's my favorite wrapper anyways, but it's also uh, one of the least expensive, and because they're smaller leaf, you get way more of them. So that is what I'm smoking today. I'm smoking my own personal blend. Uh, I am brewing up my iced coffee over here, so I am, uh, it's been uh, brewing for quite a while, so I am going to drop this into my ice. Uh, I have recently made a video about how I make this iced coffee, because, I mean, sorry, this iced, did I say coffee that whole time? Sorry, the iced tea. Um, I've been making a lot of iced coffee because my wife drinks a ton of it, so I make her the iced coffee. Uh, and I make myself iced tea here, uh, and I recently did a video about how I make my iced teas. Um, it's just a lot of ice and a nice uh, brewer like the one I have here.
So, not a whole lot going on. Uh, my wife just happens to be out with a friend tonight, so I figured, hey, what the heck, I'll uh, pop on, I'll do a quick live stream. I'm not sure how long I'll go. If there are questions from uh, the audience, then um, yeah, then I'll take them, and if not, I'll just ramble for a little bit and uh, move on. So, uh, let's see, what's been going on? So, right now, it is hot as hell outside. It is like 95 degrees with like 80% humidity, so it is sweltering. <laughs> and uh, Shirley Will says it's hot in northern Arizona. I bet it is. What's the, uh, what's the uh, humidity like, though? That's the question. Because here, it is crazy, so it feels so much hotter, because the more humid it is, the uh, easier the heat transfer from your body to... and. You can sweat like crazy, but you ain't gonna dry off because uh, it's not gonna evaporate to cool you because uh, it's so damn humid. I'm gonna check the weather right now just because I am curious. Um, but it's gonna be like 96 tomorrow, and again, ugh. so it was like 92 yesterday. It got up to like 96 today. I think it's about 91 outside right now, and you know, it's what, 6:30. Um, it's like 91 out right now. Actually, according to weather.com, it is 92 where I am. <laughs> and then tomorrow is going to be in the 90s again. And then hopefully, hopefully, then I'll be fine. But this is unusual. So, is it not humid is unusual? Or is the heat unusual for where you are in Arizona? Um, so, right now, according to um, weather.com, it's 92 degrees out right now feels like 103 <laughs> so it is very hot my uh my ac is working overtime humidity is actually currently at 58 percent but of course as the uh, temperature goes down that's just going to increase so it is it is just horrendous out right now um so usually i mean where i live you usually aren't going to find a lot of houses with uh central air uh, unless they're really high-end houses because you're only going to use air conditioning maybe 60 days a year, depending if you like it really cold, though I do, so I tend to run the AC a little bit more. But also, I have a uh, saltwater fish tank, and um, I have to run the AC to keep it under, you know, 80 degrees or whatever. Um, Shirley Will says, I'm near Prescott, so this is about normal for us. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I have to run the AC because I can't let my fish tank get too hot. Uh, at about 80 degrees is about as hot as I ever want to run my, my saltwater fish tank. Um, once you start pushing up past that, uh, things, gonna, things are going to start dying off. That's the thing with like um, um, saltwater fish is they're really temperature dependent. They, you know, along the equator reefs and what not are the the water temperature is pretty much stable within a couple of degrees so they are not used to high temperatures or low temperatures whereas a lot of like fresh water they can go really cold to really hot because depending on the season it can get really cold or really hot um obviously a lot of you know freshwater fish are from you know tropical regions so it's a little warm it's, it is warmer but there are a lot of cold water species too so um, but anyways, like, even if you slide a couple degrees um, in a, a saltwater tank, it can be a problem. And corals hate uh, temperature changes. They just get really ticked off and can kick the bucket really quickly. So it is a fine line when you're running um, that, kind of, that kind of system. So yeah, I have saltwater fish and I have some coral and whatnot just a small tank right now. I'd like to get a bigger one, but uh, that will have to wait till our, our next house when I uh, specifically build a area for a bigger tank um, and just cool the room that the tank is in. Right now, my house is really strange. I like my house because we designed it this way, but we didn't really think about this particular problem is that our bedroom takes up like the whole upstairs and my office and the bathroom are the only actual room rooms 
upstairs. So you come up the stairs and you basically walk into the open space, which is basically our bedroom. Which means if we try to cool our bedroom, it just flows down the stairs uh, because we just have like a half wall uh, separating the, uh, uh, the stairs from like our bedroom and whatnot. So it just goes down the stairs. So it's hard to cool just our bedroom. Um, if I had to do it over again, I'd probably switch it up so we only have to cool our bedroom to sleep or whatever, and we don't have to cool the whole house, um, just to make it a little more efficient. Because, like I said, you really don't need air conditioning where we live for the most part, except for those really, really hot days. So, I just, you can get away with just a window unit in, like, my office here, and then, like, our bedroom to sleep. I mean, I work from home, so I am here all the time, so, I mean, that kind of makes a bit of a difference, but it, like if I didn't want that and I didn't have my saltwater tank, um, we probably would run the AC even less because we'd have nothing to keep the house cool for. Although I guess our dogs probably would not like it if it was like 90 degrees all day. So, it is what it is, but yeah, I might design uh, our next house slightly different, So, uh, but it's, it's cool. Uh, Shirley Will see, it says, it seems like a lot of work. For a saltwater fish tank, it's actually not that bad. The thing is, I've never had a freshwater tank. I went straight to salt water. Um, it's, once you get everything right, then it's not a big deal to fix. Um, and, um, I mean, yeah, once you get everything right, it's not a big deal to maintain. Like, I haven't cleaned my tank in like six weeks, and I just did a small water change today. So, not a huge deal. It can, it's pretty self-sustaining. I just throw some food in there, you know, once a day or once every other day. And pretty much keeps to itself. So, um, but obviously you can get very complicated and get in much larger systems. But, it's not a big deal. Once you get it dialed in, then it can kind of take care of itself. There's also tons and tons of automated stuff you can get these days. Like, there's an Apex controller. Uh, I think the other one's Neptune. Uh, I don't have them because my tank isn't big enough, but there's plenty of things that you can hook it up. It'll monitor your stuff, it'll alert you if there's a problem, and it'll dose everything that you need to, so it's not a big deal. Uh, and then Shirley Will also says, um, here it cools off nice in the evening. Yeah, it does here too. Um, tonight's pretty much the only night that it's not going to be below 70. Usually it gets below 70 pretty much every night. Tonight, 73 is the low for tonight. Usually it will get down in the low 60s or even the high 50s for the most part in the summer. Um, sometimes we'll even get into the high 40s. Um, so it's really not a huge deal. I mean, you just get a couple box fans and blow them out the window and you can pretty much exchange the, <laughs> the air in your house pretty quickly to cool it down. Um, I do have to do some work on the, uh, the attic though because uh, it is not ventilated very good and it really needs to be so <laughs> I need to work on that because in the attic it's like 110 so uh, it's keeping it really hot in the house so I need to work on that this fall and I've been talking so much my cigar went out on me here let's see what else has been going on so I mean that was kind of the main thing it's just really freaking hot so I haven't really wanted to make any reviews because I don't want to do them outside I don't really want to do them in here because it's gonna get really hot so I don't know how long I'm going to be able to stand right now right now it's okay it hasn't gotten too hot in my uh, let's see it looks like it's 80 degrees in my office right now um, so I can survive it currently um, we'll see how much hotter it gets, but I really have not want, and I haven't wanted to drink any hot tea either, so I haven't had, I haven't wanted to do any tea reviews, and then by the time it gets cold, or cool outside, you know, it's 11 o'clock at night, so I really don't want to, <laughs> want to be filming at that point either. Um, it'd be nice if I had some more portable lights so I could move them outside, but it would take me like an hour to set up outside, so, uh, it's kind of been a rough, a rough week or so, so hopefully I get some more stuff in. But, so that's why I decided to pop on here because it was an uh, opportunity to do so. So yeah, uh, if anybody who's subscribed to my other channel, I just have um, like extras and stuff. It's called TNT Life and Extras. It's just like kind of randomly vlog stuff. 
you can go check that out uh, if you go to the channel page, uh, the Tea and Tobacco channel page, and then go to channels, you should be able to see my other channel. Um, so there, right before it got really hot, because um, I knew it was going to be hot these past three days, I went out and I tried to clear as much as possible off of my shooting range, which you can uh, see the video of me just kind of chit-chatting about that, just because I knew it was going to be really hot and I just wanted to cut everything as close to the ground as possible and hopefully the heat would kill a lot of it so I wouldn't have to uh, go out and deal with it. Uh, the area of my property that I use for the range is um, kind of a bit of a... It's really rocky and there's a lot of stumps and it's not very flat so it's not kind of in a mobile state at the moment. So I usually only go out there like once or twice a year, so this is kind of the first time of the year that I kind of knocked everything down. I'll, I'll go through it some more in the fall and hopefully get some, some, start getting some fill in, because I'd like to be able to get to at least a mobile state, so, I, so it's way easier to maintain. Um, yeah. Let's see, what else is going on? Um, so not really much has changed since the the tobacco adpocalypse, um, of course, and then, you know, because of all the political crap that's been going on, you know, all the, all the ads and stuff um, have come under a lot of scrutiny on who's getting ads on their videos and what type of videos they are, so tobacco has been completely crushed. Um, some people... Uh, are, you know, kind of bitchy about, you know, what do you expect to make a living doing this or anything? It's like, no, not really. I mean, it'd be nice, especially because of how much time it takes and whatnot to at least, you know, cover the costs of the channel. Um, but another problem that people don't understand about it is if you are not monetized, your videos don't get promoted nearly as much. Um, and that's kind of like a really a huge thing. So, even if I didn't care about the money, I do care about getting seen because I like people to be able to see my videos, but if they get demonetized, they don't get suggested as much. You don't see them up on the suggested side of another relative video. Um, and like my how to smoke a pipe video is the biggest example of that. That was the first one to get nailed on my channel. And you can see, if you're looking at the analytics, I was getting about 600 views a day on that, and then the day that they demonetized it, it went down to under 200, and it hasn't gone really much higher. And then if you look at this analytics called impressions, which is how much, uh, how often your video is displayed to be seen, um, and they went from 15,000, 15 to 20,000 times a day people would see my videos suggested to them or in their search results and whatnot, and that dropped to like 4,000 immediately on that day. Um, so, I mean, it's a huge thing. It's not just a money thing, it's really an exposure thing, because if my exposure of my videos has dropped from 20,000 suggestions a day down to 4,000, then, you know, that's a huge difference from people being able to see your videos. So it's, it's tough and, and, you know, that's just kind of how it goes. Um, so it's kind of really a, a bit of a bummer on that one. Well, it looks like not a whole lot has changed on that. Um, let's see, what else is going on? All right, so in lieu of that stuff, uh, as far as tea and tobacco is dealing. Um, <clears throat> one of my viewers has been nice enough to offer me web services, so that's cool. So I will, uh, in the next couple weeks, I'm going to meet up with him, um, and we'll be discussing uh, website design and whatnot. And um, if anybody has any suggestions of what they'd like to see in the website, um, send them my way. Uh, one of the things I'd like to do, I'd like to make it available for other people to be able to post articles and stuff. So like if you are a um, <clears throat> YouTube creator or whatever and you want to write an article and if you want to use your own like if, if you want to put your you know Amazon affiliate links or whatever in your articles and 
put your own like type of advertising on those so you can you know at least get a portion of what traffic you're generating to the site um, <clears throat> that's kind of something I'm, I'm looking to do because I'd really like to be able to have kind of a, a place for people to to be able to do that stuff without having to develop their own um, if they don't want to or have the means to do so um, and then I'm I want to do some sort of like a curated section to um, put not just like my videos but have access to other presenters videos um, so kind of like put them in one place uh, so I mean yeah so Shirley Will says YTPC needs a full-time website where their own videos will go yeah I mean that's kind of what I'm gonna do so you can host them wherever you want and then you would be able to uh, post them there would be like the, the right place to put them so that's uh, kind of where it is um, so you know that's what I've been thinking and hopefully if people want to do that because I know there's some people um, out there um, that have started to move away from doing uh, tobacco related videos just because of the, the um, uh, what do you want to call it, the environment out there. So this would give them a place to, if they still have the urge to do that kind of content from time to time, it's a place for them to put it um, and they won't have to, you know, bog down their, own, uh, their regular avenues or whatnot. Because I know some people still want to make that content, but um, they're more focused on other stuff, and once in a while, if they want to make it, uh, that'd be fine. Um, so that's kind of my idea for that, um, and see what else I can do with that to, you know, um, make it make it as user friendly and kind of like a curated place as much as possible for for anybody who kind of wants to use it. Um, I have been <laughs> uploading my videos to uh, Daily Motion as well, um, just because, but there's not a whole lot of traffic over there. And I was, I've been looking at some other places, but really there's nothing out there other than YouTube, which kind of sucks. So, um, so far, at least they're still hosting the stuff, even if they're not monetizing the stuff. So that's kind of, yeah, it is what it is, I guess. Shirley Will says, I just started posting videos. Um, cool. I will, uh, after this live stream, I will, uh, go check out what you got and see what's going on. Um. I get it. not that you're asking for it, but uh, advice-wise, really just kind of stick with it. Um, it's kind of a it's kind of a war of attrition type of deal um, for the most part. Um, yeah, I mean that's really it. That's kind of the kind of the key to it these days. Um, just because of so much content out there, and there are so many people making content, and now if you if you are making tobacco-related videos. Uh, your, like I said, your exposure is going to be limited a lot because of the monetization problem and then promoting your videos to other, uh, you know, to other viewers, even if it's on a related video, which is so stupid. So if somebody sees somebody else's how to smoke pipe video, mine might not show up in the corner now that I'm demonetized. So it's really hit or miss. And I can't understand why some stuff is monetized and some isn't. Like, I have some cigar reviews that I submitted for manual review, and some of them they said, yeah, sure, go for it. Uh, it's fine for monetization. Other they say they're not. So it's like, it's the same exact content, but some is and some isn't. So it's so stupid. Um, yeah. Like, I'm not opposed to companies setting their own rules. The only problem is set clear rules <laughs> and then we can follow them that is fine i have no problem with a, a company setting their rules however they want the problem is is when they're so vague and anything can fall under the under the purview of not suitable um you know just be clear about what you want and respond appropriately and then it actually be all right um i think that the problem is i know a lot of people are talking about you know regulating and all this stuff but really I think it's a fraud problem because they're they're promoting a product that they aren't delivering on 
and that's kind of where the problem is. So if they are just clear about it and we're upfront about their rules, fine. But if you're just super vague and completely at a whim, then that's a problem. Shirley Will says, I plan on doing some outdoor videos um, uh, with me, maybe smoking a pipe after. Yeah, uh, outdoor videos will be fine for now. We'll see. I'm sure there are a lot of problems when it comes to, you know, camping is fine. Hunting is going to be a problem. Um, fishing could be iffy um, in the future, definitely. And uh, obviously anything with guns is going to be a massive problem. So basically YouTube kills me on all my fun hobbies because I like <laughs> cigars and pipe tobacco and shooting guns. So I'm kind of SOL on, uh, <laughs> on YouTube being happy with my choices of activities that I might videotape. And I don't do enough camping stuff or anything like that, so... But yeah, uh, maybe I'll make some videos uh, about me um, clearing my my backyard and building my gun range. At least building the gun range should be fine because it's more dealing with taking down trees and clearing and all that fun stuff. But it's not very fun. I don't think it makes a very exciting video either, but we'll see. <laughs> it's just a, just a lot to do out there. Um, let's see, what else has been going on? So I added lights to my, um, my humidor over here. Uh, this is the, uh, the new air, uh, uh, 300H, uh, I think it's CC 300H. Um, I like it. The only problem is if you have a really, if it starts to get hot. If it starts to get hot, you're going to have issues maintaining humidity. Um, so you'll have to come up with some sort of way to address that because as it cools, it's going to suck humidity out because it's going to create a ton of condensation and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> so what I've noticed is, especially if it's really stocked like mine is, I put a um, sensor in the back and in the front on the same shelf and they're like four degrees difference. Um, so what I did is I put a small blower fan on the bottom of the glass so it's blowing up the front of the glass and that's kind of helped with the temperature problems. Um, but then if it's like 85 degrees in my office, if I didn't run the AC or something, then uh, when it kicks on to cool it, it really sucks a lot of humidity out. So you need to figure out some way to put um, some sort of catch tray back into some like you know some gel beads or something like that. Um, so th at least the water stays in the unit and doesn't go out the back. Uh, there's like a little drain and then kind of like a like an evaporation tray. So any uh, excess moisture kind of goes into that and then it just evaporates into the into the room. Um, so it's something you just want to, you know, rig up something, like, you know, just get some, um, duct tape or whatever and a little dish, um, that, um, that catches the water as the condensation comes down. Uh, it has a nice little channel in the back, so it's not going to get on your cigars or anything, but it has a channel where it goes down, um, so just have it go back into a dish of gel beads and, and call it good. Shirley Will says, I have a chest humidor, maybe 200 cigars, and humidity beads keeps it at 65% easy. Yeah, uh, I don't know how much of a temperature swing you have in your house, though. Um, so, you know, I can have huge temperature swings where I am, um, you know, from you know, 65 at night to up into, you know, close to 90 during the day. And that huge of a temperature swing, even in an insulated unit like this still swings it so much um, and 
obviously you do not want to get high temperatures because um, once you hit about 80 degrees is when uh, tobacco beetles start hatching. Um, so it's not a moisture problem per se. Uh, at that point it's going to be when the beetles start hatching and that's obviously very bad if uh, you get a beetle outbreak. So that's, that's no fun. But yeah, unfortunately, when it does that, it does take some of the humidity out. The humidity rebounds at night, which is fine, um, when the cooling unit kind of stops cooling. Um, but yeah, just something to be aware of uh, if you don't, um, if you don't have a relatively stable temperature in your house, um, it could be a problem if it gets higher than your, you know, if it has to cool use the cooling unit quite a lot. Shirley Will says, never had that problem. Yeah, it doesn't happen often, um, but it can happen. Um, especially like me, I roll my own. Um, so I get a lot of raw tobacco, or, well, not raw, but, you know, cured tobacco and whatnot, and, you know, the, the eggs are microscopic. Um, some... Some companies deep freeze their um, cigars before they import them, and that can sometimes kill the bugs, uh, kill the eggs, but sometimes they don't, and they can stay dormant for a very, very long time. So um, it is just something to be aware of. Um, but like I said, you can't see them. They're probably in your cigars for the most part. Um, but yeah, I guess you can try to deep freeze, but... Um, most freezers don't get cold enough. You gotta get them down to like something like you know, 20 below zero Fahrenheit um, and hold them there for a couple days. Some people think zero is good enough. Um, so some people do freeze their cigars before they put them in the humidor. Uh, hey, what's up, old Hollywood Briar? Um, how's a. How, are you, so are you actually in Hollywood, California, and are you in a Hollywood that is. Not in California. Then you just go by Hollywood. <laughs> and if so, how's uh, how's life in California treating me? I don't think I could not live in California. It would not be fun. Lives right under the sign. All right. <laughs> yeah, definitely would not survive in California. Um, the laws are just not um, favorable. To me. <laughs> and now what was it like Berkeley has like stopped tobacco sales in the entire town or something like that made made tobacco completely illegal except for like a couple grandfathered in cigar shops or something like that. The People's Republic of California, my friends call it. I call it California. <laughs> um, but yeah, Beverly Hills made tobacco illegal. Yeah, you know, which is kind of stupid because a ton of actors smoke, don't they? <laughs> How the heck did that get passed? Like half the actors on the planet smoke, which is kind of funny. Except for Arnold's Cigar Lounge. Well, yeah, you can't get rid of Arnold's Cigar Lounge. I mean, geez. You know, people who have power are the ones that get to get to choose whatever the rest of us, what the rest of us do. One of my friends was an act, is an actor, was a madman, can't associate with tobacco. It's gotten weird. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just like um, how they all got all bitchy about how often people are smoking in Stranger Things in the latest season. It's like, it's the 80s. Everybody smoked in the 80s. It's like, it's how it goes. So stupid. Shirley Will was uh, originally from San Diego and then left for Arizona 30 years ago. Good call. 
<clears throat> I'd be, yeah, I'd be totally, yeah. I got too much stuff that would not fly in, in California. I live on my little island of freedom of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, and then I'm surrounded by the rest of New York, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island. Oh, God. Freaking horrible. So I, I don't leave my little island of, uh, of freedom for the most part. <laughs> Let's see, anything else? <laughs> New York is more dirty than India. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> I try to stay, I stay out of those states as much as humanly possible. I try to not touch Massachusetts ever. I pretty much just stay where I am. Um. Yes, there's less people crapping in the street. That's what's nice about living in a town of 7,000 people. There's not really any sidewalks. There's not going to be any homeless people because there's not enough people to support a homeless person. <laughs> they, there's nowhere to panhandle. You need volume for panhandling. And I don't have it where I live, so... This is an encampment just outside of uh, Hollywood Briar's place. Yeah. It's what you get with nice, nice weather and a lot of people. Here, it gets, you know, to zero degrees in the, in the winter and 100 degrees in the summer. So, uh, it's not very conducive to people um, living outside. Let's see, what else is going on? Um, the Firebird that was in my Aging Room Cigar video is still there. Haven't sold it yet, unfortunately. Um, it did have some extra um, floor pans to go with it, so I actually just sold those today. But the Firebird is still up for sale. Um, hopefully that will be gone soon, because it is in my way of my gun range project. Um, it's kind of like sitting right where I need people to be dumping fill, so I need to get that car moved. Um, so, I'll go soon. Uh, what year is the car? It is a 1983 Firebird. Um, it's my mother-in-law's. She drove it around. Um, in her late teens and early 20s, um, and then it's um, been sitting since it was last on the road in 2002. Kind of looks like crap now, but the quarter panels are all good, the engine is junk, the interior is junk, so really if anybody wants it, it's going to be for the exterior parts. All the quarter panels are great. Um, there's like no huge dents, there's a minor ding in one of the doors, like looks like a golf ball head type of size of ding, but everything else is still nice and smooth. There's a little rust here and there, but I mean, you could hit that with hand sandpaper and take care of it, um, so not a big deal. Um, but yeah, so it's a project car or a parts car for the most part, so hopefully somebody will take it off my hands. I'm, I dropped the price down to like 600 bucks. Um, at this point, I'll take like 300 for it. So. <laughs> Just want it out of my yard because I don't have the time to work on it or the money to work on it. And, um, yeah. And I don't really like that year. I really don't like 80s muscle cars in general. The 80s kind of sucked. I'm more of a pre... Well, Corvette was good through 1982 because that is the original Stingray body still. <clears throat> um, but pretty much 70s and before is kind of my my favorite era of cars. Um, I'd really love like a 74 Corvette Stingray convertible. That's kind of like my dream car um, that I'd love to have. Uh, and then I'd really like a, like a anywhere between like a 48 and a 55 half ton pickup, either Chevy or Ford. I, either one I'd be happy with. 
Um, I just kind of love that bubbly, <laughs> that nice rounded bubbly body. Uh, I think those are really cool. So those are kind of like my favorite like old cars. But you know, I like all the old stuff from the '70s. You know, you got the Chevelles and the GTOs and the, uh, the Camaro and all that stuff. But once you hit the '80s, especially like the mid '80s, oh god, they're horrible. Um, oh, have you seen the new Corvette? It looks cool. Doesn't look like a Corvette, and they're calling it a Stingray. But really, it just looks like a Ferrari or a Lamborghini type of car. It super sucks. Like, I would love if car companies released, like, a retro car. Like, it looks exactly like the old version. So, like, if they if the Stingray actually looked like a 70s Stingray, and they just had, like, up, you know, new design for, like, um, you know, uh, you know, safety and, and ride and suspension and all that stuff. That would be sweet, because I would love to have one of those, but the new Stingray <laughs> Corvette just looks like a, you know, a startup supercar, you know, startup company supercar, generic, you know, European supercar. It's just, man, kind of a bummer. Father Bryce says, used to drive a 67 Mustang. My wife would love a 67 Mustang. She loves the old Mustang. She would like, like a 55 Mustang, you know, something like that. Um, those are getting really expensive um, in the aftermarket. Still, for some reason, the Stingrays were super expensive for a while there. And I've checked them out recently, and they've come back down in price. Um, surely will the Camaro. Are you Camaro, an old Camaro? Oh, 67 Camaro. Nice. Um, that would be cool. And actually, I like the current Camaros. The current Camaros look that ass. They're one of the, like, the few, like, cars that came back after they were not made for a while that look sweet. Um, and actually kind of still had, you know, a Camaro feel to it. But now, yeah, the new Corvette, no, not so much. <laughs> My uh, uncle had like a 86 Camaro, an IROC, or was that the year? Nah, somewhere around that. Mid, mid, late 80s. The IROC. Here is kind of a pain in the ass to have nice cars, um, just because of where I am and <laughs> so much winter. <laughs> So, your car's pretty much in the garage for six months out of the year, seven months out of the year, because you don't want to drive it around with all the salt on the road and stuff. What's up, Lycans? Yeah, I haven't done a live, uh, a live um, stream in quite a while. I just, I don't know why. I just didn't. Um, Usually I do it when my wife's not home, so, because usually I'm doing stuff with her. Um, but she's out with a friend tonight, so I have the house to myself right now. And uh, I really had nothing to do, so I'm like, oh, what the hell, I'll, uh, I'll pop online and see what happens. And amazingly, this room is still only 81 degrees, or just shy of 81 degrees, so I'm not sweating out just yet. So I am surviving. Um, but that's kind of been the big thing, too. It's been really freaking hot. And I just barely put the air conditioner in because my uh, my fish tank was overheating. So um, now it's at least sort of comfortable in here to um, do a live stream. But these lights make it a little, little toasty. All right, Shirley Will. Shirley Will's got to go start the barbecue. Yeah, I'm, I should probably make dinner at some point. What time is it? 7.10. 7.10 is not too bad. Um... But I'm on the East Coast, so. Um, and I had a late dinner, so. I mean, late lunch, so. I'm not really, not really having an issue at the moment. I'd like to do some more live streams. Um, so I did set up, 
a Patreon if anybody is interested. Um, and one of the things I'd like to do eventually would be a live or at least a week a bi-weekly like magazine style show. So just going over you know some industry news and stuff like that. You know, 25, 30 minutes, something like that. Um, so that's one of the uh, one of the funding goals. Um, I haven't gotten anywhere close to that, so we'll see. Um, barbecue, are you a hot sauce guy? Um, I'm a hot sauce guy. Uh, Cholula seems to pretty much be in my cabinet all the time. Seems to be my go-to. Um, Frank's is good, too. I mean, you can't go wrong with, like, the classics. Um, but yeah. Old Hollywood Briar says he goes to parties for a living. Um, like working the party? Like, <laughs> like food and entertainment type part of the party? <laughs> I crunch numbers for a living, which is, sorry, pays the bills. That's not a totally super crappy job. And I get to work from home, so. <laughs> so that's kind of the nice part. I get to work from home. I don't have to dress up every day. Oh, all, uh, old Hollywood Briar says he's a photographer. Nice. Uh, my, uh, my stepdad's a professional photographer. Um, he pretty much just, you know, he's basically retired now. Um, but he was a photographer for, you know, 50 years or whatever. Mostly just like portrait and uh, wedding photography. And then he got out of weddings um, as he started to get older. Because um, he had a big enough client list of people here, you know, just doing senior portraits, family portraits, all that kind of crap. So, nothing super exciting, but um, uh, it worked out. I remember the first time when he was um, in the mid switch from is still hybrid film and digital. Um, the first computer he bought to install Photoshop on was a 133 megahertz computer had 128 megabytes of RAM and it cost $15,000 and had, it was right when Windows 95 came out um, but yeah I remember that freaking 15 grand because RAM was so damn expensive um, it was crazy <laughs> so so I remember that fact. It had like a 1.6 gigabyte hard drive in it, um, which was huge. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that was the first computer that I remember him getting for, for starting to get into digital. And he was like one of the first guys doing digital. Um, he won a lot of awards at like the, um, I forget what it's called, the wherever all the photographers meet in Vegas, you know, every every year or whatever. Well, it was in Vegas at the time. Um, so he had some of the first um, digital made, digitally produced collage type photos and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, it was kind of funny. Uh, right on. Do you always wear hats? My girlfriend's family makes all the hats for the movies. Uh, yes, I pretty much always wear a hat because my hairline is receding pretty bad. Um, and, um, yeah, I've just kind of pretty much always worn hats since I was like a, since I was a kid. Um, my high school, once, um, here, once you reached high school, they, you could wear a hat all day. Um, middle school was kind of, um, they didn't really wear hats, but once you hit high school, uh, here, the, uh, rules were a little less strict. You were allowed to chew gum, you were allowed to wear hats. <laughs> so, that's kind of what everybody did, and, um. Well, not everybody, but I pretty much wore a hat 
since freshman year of high school, every day since then. Uh, then, in, you know, through college, I went to film school in Vancouver. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, so I pretty much have always worn hats. I switched to flat caps for the most part. Um, I wear baseball hats, you know, a lot too. Um, but I switched to flat caps mostly in, I don't know, probably when I was about 20. So, a long time ago at this point. <laughs> so, quite a while ago I switched to flat caps. Um, but yeah, um, pretty much uh, my collection is, I got like three or four Kangles. Um, this Dockers, this is actually Dockers, which um, I didn't even know they made hats. I thought they just made pants. Um, so this one my, uh, my mother-in-law got me probably like five years ago now. Um, and then I have like a Tweed Kangle that my wife got me for our wedding. Um, so. Uh, so that, that's kind of, that's the other Kangle. And then I've recently picked up some Epochs and a few others. What's the worst brand of cigar that you can think of? Um, I, I don't know. I've never really had a super crappy cigar. Well, no, I'll, I'll really crappy cigars. Um, one would be a long time ago. Um, Thomas, their house brand, Dominican, was crap. It's really bad. But this is like 15 years ago at least um, since I've had one. Uh, and then I had an Isla de Sol made by Drew Estate that was just horrible. I think, I'm not sure if how they're made today, but when I had one, it's about 10 years ago now, um, they were a medium filler cigar, so they could scraps and whatnot, so they weren't very consistent. The one I had, the one time, was just horrible. Um, but as far as a, like a total brand, um, I can't, there's not really anybody who's consistently bad. Um, so I don't really have a really an opinion on that one. Old Hollywood Briar says dated off. Is it because they're just overpriced for what they are, or are they just really bad? Because <laughs> uh, I believe David off has picked up a few of the few other brands, um, but I really haven't had a David off branded cigar. I've had some of their sub-brands, because I think they own Camacho now. Um, they haven't been a problem. Just never had a good one. Yeah, I, like I said, I haven't, I haven't had a David Off branded cigar, so I couldn't tell you because they're expensive, and I really don't like to pay a lot for cigars a lot of the time. Kind of like 10 bucks is kind of my cutoff point um, after that, and they're never in samplers or anything like that, so... I pretty much live off of samplers. I rarely ever buy like a box of anything, um, and since they don't land in samplers ever, I pretty much don't get them, or I would not usually come across them. So if someone wants to send them to me to review, I'll do it, um, but that's probably one I'm not going to go out of my way to buy. Lichens, do you have a... Uh, a brand that you don't particularly like is that why you're searching? <laughs> you're, you're searching if I uh, if there's a brand that I don't like. Um, some brands have bad reps, though I can't figure out why because I personally like them. I know Gurkha gets a bad rep. I have had a bad Gurkha. I thought about. I just, just remember that. Um, I forget what it was though. I think it was a Park Ave. I think it's the Gold Label Park Ave. But again, this is, I mean, this is probably eight to ten years ago. Um, 
I'm too experienced to name a brand. Just was curious. <laughs> uh, all I know is I love Swamp Thang. I have not had one of those yet. There are so many cigars out there. It's insane. And new cigars have been coming out on the market, which is kind of it's kind of weird because of the FDA crap. But I have looked into the FDA stuff a little bit more, and there's how it's written about needing to get approval is it needs to be significantly different from existing products on the market that were grandfathered in. But since cigars are all made up of just tobacco leaf and the glue that they use, which is a vegetable based usually, um, like a vegetable based cellulose, um, I'm not sure if they're actually going to have to get approval because there's no substances, substantive difference from cigar to cigar. They're just leaf from different places. Um, there's no new additives or anything going into cigars for the most part, uh, unless you're talking about like the acid line or any of the flavored cigars. So maybe that's the conclusion they kind of came to. I don't know. It's just kind of weird because I have seen so many new cigars come out after the FDA rulings. Um, so either they are not worried about the FDA ruling coming down um, and causing a problem as much as they were when it originally came out and they didn't see the guidelines. And now that the guidelines have been published more, it might not be as big of a problem. I'm hoping that's the case because just kind of how it's wording, you could make the you could make the argument that nothing new to the market is being put out there because there's really no substantive difference between cigar to cigar. It's all the same stuff, and I'm hoping this is going to be the same way with like pipe tobacco, is that as long as there's no new ingredients getting put in that haven't been put in since prior to 2007, then we might be okay. But I guess we'll see. Probably an uh, probably a relevant question, but would ever do the odd cigarette review, for example, amber leaf handled cigarette. Um, I don't smoke cigarettes, so I would probably not uh, do a review on them. <laughs> To FDA, a change in manufacturing location is a significant change. It might, well, yeah, it could be. I don't know. We'll see. They're obviously still fighting it, and they're still releasing new cigars and, and pipe tobaccos, so they might know something that we don't at the moment. I don't know. Really, the FDA is a bunch of bullcrap anyways. It's, it's so stupid, because really it was... They want to go after vaping um, to keep kids from not smoking, but it's like kids aren't buying $10 premium cigars, and they're definitely not buying the premium pipe tobacco either. They're buying the, if they're buying the pipe tobacco, it's going to be like the crappy, really the cigarette tobacco that's just going under the, but. It's that the regulations are not being enforced. Yeah, and I don't, well, I don't think the enforcement date has really come up yet because it keeps getting pushed. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but, I mean, it's just so stupid because it's really because of vaping and uh, they're pushing and all that crap. And obviously big tobacco, like all the cigarette companies, they want to make vaping, you know, super hard. Um, Yeah, I'm sure the uh, not being enforced. I worked for a company that was audited by FDA, not for FDA. Uh, but I'm familiar with how they work. They are trying to end tobacco. Yeah, I'm sure they are. I mean, that's just how it is. And especially if the uh, the socialist douchebags want to push, you know, universal health care and whatnot, they are going to make it even more difficult because they, yeah, they're going to pretty much control everything that we do.
so I wonder if, well, right now, which, well, so that's one of the reasons I started getting into rolling my own cigars, so I can kind of cut off some of this, because still, currently, whole leaf tobacco is still considered an agricultural product, so it is not taxed like tobacco or anything like that, and it's not regulated as much. Um, you still have to be 18 to purchase it, but that's it. Um, so, I'm sure they'll probably come down with that at some point. Socialist health care will never work here, especially with so many people in poor health. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. Um, economic Economics would not support it very well. And there would be a huge decline in the global market since US, the U.S. for-profit system is where a lot of the drugs are developed. <laughs> so we pretty much provide a good hunk of the R&D for the entire planet, and then they just back up, you know, they just uh, piggyback off of our research because um, they don't have to spend money doing it because we're doing it for them. But once everybody, if everybody was on socialized, then they'd be totally screwed, especially if we move that way. The entire world would suddenly, the developments would slow massively. But even here, the, the healthcare system is so stupid because it's like half in, half out, that's a big problem. Remember that socialized healthcare has been proven to be cheaper than our current system. Socialized medicine would cost trillions less. I used to work in the medical field. Yeah, I work in the medical field, um, and so does my wife. Uh, I'm sure it will cost less, but the question is, will the quality be high? That's kind of where the problem is going to be. Proven by a libertarian study. Yeah, I'm not. I'm. I wouldn't be surprised if it's going to be cheaper. The quality is going to be the problem, though. You get the, uh, just like everything, you get the three. You get the. It can be good, cheap, or in this, this case, universal, and you can only have two. <laughs> like you know. If you limit how much doctors make, why would they even bother going into the field and spending so much time and money just getting into it? Our quality is far worse than... In which... In what way is our quality less than other countries? The problem is you have to compare populations, which is a problem. Um because they don't have the same type of social quality, uh, social, I don't know how you want to put it, um, melting pot as we do. <laughs> Worst outcomes, how? And are they apples to apples? That's the thing. So like, our cancer outcomes are better for the same cancer, but the problem is you have to look at, uh, I guess, ethnic populations to compare to other countries with the same ethnic population. Just because the U.S. we have horrible health in general. Um, yeah, the, of course the ranking is across the entire population. And we have such a mixed population compared to other countries that have a lot of um, uh, what do you want? Uh, can't even think of the word. I 
I you know I can't even think of the word. <laughs> I guess we have populations that live drastically different lifestyles compared to a lot of countries that are very similar lifestyles across the population and we just have really bad health in general because we have shitty food a lot of people eat like crap you know all that fun stuff work with a lot of Canadians, they think we are crazy for spending so much on health care. Uh, it's just a profit thing, there are too many people profiting from health care who are not involved with it. Yeah, that's the problem because we're like partially regulated and partially not regulated. It's like we have the worst of both worlds, which is the biggest problem. Yes, Canadians pay a lot more in taxes. I'd rather be in charge of my own um, my own life than have the government making decisions for me. I'm pretty sure I know what's best for me versus government bureaucrats. <laughs> Got apple cinnamon barbecue sauce. That sounds really good. <laughs> Are you uh, barbecue barbecuing or uh, grilling? <laughs> this is the difference. Grilling, yeah. Um, grilling's good. Uh, my dad likes to, uh, he's got a smoker, so whenever we go to a uh, cookout or whatever, he usually brings a pulled pork or whatever that he uh, cooked for like 14 hours, so that's always awesome. <laughs> Let's see, what else is going on? Um, picked up a bunch of new pipe tobaccos, so I got the, some of the new ones that came out. I already did a review on the uh, the Bengal Slices White Label, that's one of the new ones. I have the two new John Cottons that came out as well. Um, what else came out? Oh, that new Seattle Pipe Club came out, but I don't have it. It came out after I placed the order, um, so I haven't gotten around to buying it. There's a new GLP that came out. Um, which is a vapor. That's cool. Um, how was what? The Bengal Slice is white. Uh, I did a review on it. It's uh, really good. There's no topping on it like the Black Label. Um, and it is a standard English. It's uh, Virginia Latakia and um, uh, Orientals. Uh, I have not gotten Penny Farthing yet. Um, that came out after... Like, there's just a spattering of new ones, so I'm like, oh, I'll buy these, and then some more came out. So, uh, I gotta pick that up, and I need to get the new Seattle Pipe Club one, too. I think it's called Wild Man, or something like that. Uh, 
Uh, I always hear about South American cigar makers, but are they in Europe and Asia? I know the Japanese are getting a lot into scotch. Um, did it remind me of the MP? Yeah, well. Okay, um, for cigar makers, the South American, um, since you can get Cubans um, in Europe, I don't know. Well, you can get them in Asia too. I don't know what the I don't know what the Asian market is like for cigars in general, um, but the European market is heavily Cuban um, because you can get them. And the thing is, with a lot of the um, South and Central American brands, is that they are using names like Monte Cristo, Cohiba, and all those fun names that are owned by Cuba, but since the U.S. doesn't recognize the claim on the trademark because of the embargo, they can, the Cuban trademark, those are coming into the country uh, under basically the South American brands. Um, and for a long time, they were not owned by the same people. Um, uh, Altidus is the main owner of a lot of the Cuban names. Romeo and Julieta, uh, Monte Cristo, H. Upman, they're all owned by Altidus, uh, the South American versions of them. Uh, but recently, I believe they've also purchased a large stake in the Cuban market as well, assuming that eventually the U.S. embargo is going to be ending soon. So to get a, so they won't lose access with both the South American and Cuban names. Um, so there's that. Um, as far as the European market, that's why you're not going to see a lot of the same cigars over there is because the Cubans actually hold the trademark on the rest of the world for that name. Um, but you're still going to see stuff like Rocky Patel, um, uh, Alec Bradley, you're probably going to see those, uh, but they're not going to be as uh, popular over there since you have access to the Cubans. Although I think a lot of Nicaraguan based cigars are pretty popular over in Europe as well. Um, I just can't think of the brand names that they would be under because I don't live in Europe, so I, I wouldn't really see them that much. I've seen Canada's going to be roughly the same way. I, I have seen some ca Canadian shops and uh, I've seen what they have there. They're going to have like the bigger brands, you know, like uh, Arturo Fuente, CAO, uh, Alec Bradley, Rocky Patel, uh, David Off, you know, all those kind of guys. Did it remind me of Early Morning Pipe? Uh, don't know, because the one tin of or Early Morning Pipe I have, I haven't opened. <laughs> um, I bought it, and then... Um, the one tin that I have, I bought, and then a few months later is when it came out that uh, Dunhill was getting out of the tobacco game, um, so I just kind of been holding on to it. Um, and then now um, that STG has purchased the trademarks to the Dunhill stuff, um, we'll see what happens. Uh, hopefully the blends stay the same. They were making... Uh, STG was already making the Dunhill blends that were out, um, so hopefully they will just release them under the, one of their sub-brands, um, and then we'll get them back on the market, and then I'll actually pop my tin of Dunhill and, uh, and see what, uh, but no, I couldn't compare the two. Um, sorry about that. Uh, Wild Man, yes, Wild Man is the new Seattle Pipe Club one that came out. Che wanted to nuke us and <laughs> love to kill dogs. Uh, yes. Yes, I hate it when people have his face on their shirt, which makes no sense, especially when you see it at like a gay pride event. That is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Um, there's some cigar rollers in China, Japan. 
I've only heard one review on them so far. Review on what? On a Chinese cigar? I would be surprised if there's, there's a lot of Chinese stuff, but it doesn't make it over here. Um, yeah. <clears throat> the Chinese market is going to be very interesting just given the political climate over there. Um, obviously I get pretty much all my tea from China, or at least a good amount of it. Um, so that's kind of interesting. It's kind of that mixed economy problem. Um, and obviously tobacco is going to be a cash crop, so we'll see. What is YouTube's rules on cigars? Uh, pertaining to what part of rules specifically? They're fine if you want to make cigar videos. Um, that's fine. The problem is the monetization part. Uh, it seems that cigar videos, reviews, are not advertiser friendly anymore. Um, they used to be. Um, a lot of us, you know, built up our channels and were, you know, sustaining our channels with it, and now they're dead. Um, they have demonetized pretty much all of my pipe tobacco reviews and cigar reviews. All of them got demonetized on like the same day. Um, I got hit, pretty much all of us got hit on the same day. I got hit, um, uh, Cigar Obsession got hit, Should I Smoke This got hit. Um, we all got hit on pretty much the same day. So it was pretty much across the board. They just did mass demonetization of everything cigar and pipe tobacco related. Um, uh, stuff and things got hit. Yeah, all of us got hit same day. <clears throat> Everyone was mad at Stranger Things having cigarettes. Yeah, I, I already mentioned that, but yeah, they're all up in a hubbub because people are smoking cigarettes in Stranger Things. It's like, is the 80s. You want this to be realistic, right? Pretty, uh, yeah, they're, it's been ridiculous. And now Netflix is like, all right, we're not going to have smoking in anything that's uh, TV 14 and under. It's like, so stupid. But I have not finished season three yet. <laughs> Just a few, I'm a few episodes in. Um, but yeah, that's what current um, YouTube's rules seem to be. Even though if you read the actual rules, it doesn't really say much about it. So, yeah, they're very unclear. That's the problem with the rules a lot on all these social media platforms is that they are vague and anything can fall under everything. Dark is better than Stranger Things. I have not watched Dark. I. Is it on Netflix, or is it on Hulu, or is it on Amazon? I don't know. I don't even know what, what platform it's on. Hey man, this is me from Instagram East. Instagram East? <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. It's on Netflix. Alright, I will check out Dark on Netflix. I have so much crap I have to watch, it's insane. Like, I haven't watched... I'm st I still haven't watched the newest season of Man in the High Castle. Um, so I know I need to watch that. I need to finish this season of Stranger Things. Now I gotta watch Dark. <laughs> oh, There's just so much. And I am big into, uh, like, um, I'm a big... I'm a big wrestling fan, but I don't watch WWE. I pretty much all watch New Japan these days. I'm so far behind on New Japan and I have not watched any other G1. <laughs> this this year's G1, I'm still stuck on Best of the Super Juniors. Um, I have watched all the AEW shows, yes, I have, uh, which are going to be awesome and I can't wait for them to start, which then adds even more wrestling to my watch list. But yes, I'm in the middle of the Best of Super Juniors for, for New Japan. Um, I think I'm on uh, May 23rd or something like that. 
Um, so yes, I really need to get caught up because I hear there are some crazy awesome matches in the G1 and um, I don't really want to skip ahead because I hear there are crazy episodes, there are crazy matches with Will Ospreay in the Best of Super Juniors and yes, I have seen some awesome matches with Will Ospreay in the Super Juniors. Um, and Will Ospreay is in the G1 as well. So he moved up to the to the heavyweight division. Well, I don't know if he has technically moved up into the heavyweight division, because I think he's still... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what his current status is. I think at the time of Best of Super Juniors, he was... Um, uh, he was... Never weight... Champion? So, I guess we'll see. I'm sure Dave will get, get every, everything five stars, probably. Netflix is 10 billion in debt, probably gonna go out of business. That would be interesting. What's the light bulb in the corner? So this thing over here, um, it's nothing special, it's just a Edison bulb. Uh, it's just a funky, here I'll show it to you, it's just a funky, um, just funky light. Uh, nothing, nothing overly special. Um, it's just kind of a cool little, cool little lamp that my wife got me. So, uh, yeah, I thought I'd put it there and I have to put it on a, on a dimmer or else it totally blows out. So I have it on a dimmer. So here, I'm going to turn it all the way up, turn it up and it totally blows out. Um, so I have it on dimmer so I can turn it down and, uh, up too off. So it, it can still look cool without blowing out. Uh, I heard about the debt. Don't know what caused it. I don't know what caused it. Um, I'm surprised there are 10 billion in debt. Uh, that isn't too bad. What's their market cap right now, though? Isn't their market cap, like, way more than that? I'd have to check. I, I, haven't, I haven't looked at their stock price for quite a while. Now I'm curious. Netflix. Market cap is 137 billion. So even be ten, being 10 billion dollars in debt, not a huge, not a huge deal at the moment. Their business model is to get bought. Yeah, probably. Um, I'm curious how that will go. I'm not sure who will pick it up. Um, I'd assume Amazon's probably in the running for that one. Uh, let's see, where are we going here? We got a lot of stuff here. Uh, what type of pipe tobacco do you prefer in the morning, if any? Um, it really depends. Oh, I got I got you on the the Instagram handle. Got it. Um, what pipe tobacco do you prefer in the morning, if any? Um, usually in the summer months, uh, I tend not to in the morning. Um, once it starts getting cold, then I do. It, I, I'm a very weird seasonal, seasonal, seasonal smoker. Um, I'm a big fan of really Latakia heavy in the morning. So, Pirate Cake, Ten Russians, those are going to be at the top of my list for the first thing in the morning. Um, I'm just a huge Latakia fan in general. Um, pretty much, pretty much lap bombs are my go-to. <laughs> so, Pirate Cake, um, uh, you know what's actually good in the morning and it's super cheap, uh, is John Bull. John Bull is actually really good. It comes in the pouch and it's actually super cheap. Um, so that's actually a good one for like an everyday type of smoke. Um, uh, old Hollywood Briar likes PS English Luxury. Yeah, 
It's a good one in the morning. I think I smoked all of the stuff that I have. It wasn't high enough on my list to continue buying it because there are some others that I like better. Um, I have tried Billy Bud. Billy Bud I am a big fan of. Not so much in the morning, but yes, it is a good blend. I smoked through the two ounces that I bought pretty quickly. Um, I will probably buy some more in the future, but right now I'm... I just continue buying new stuff that I haven't tried. There's not a whole lot I re-buy just because of the nature of this channel. I uh, like to try. I'm really a sampler for the most part. <laughs> I like to try everything uh, and rarely stick with one thing um, except for uh, Pirate Cake. Pirate Cake is one of those that I buy uh, if I run out. And uh, my cigar is yeah, pretty much done. Um, let's see, where did I get the Cigar Lounge sign? Um, that was a gift from my, uh, mother-in-law, so I don't know where she got it. I'm pretty sure she got it on Amazon. Um, <laughs> I think that's where I got it. I think that's where she got it. Uh, yes, she got it for my wall for, um... Um, well, so, um, I have not tried Key Largo, and I'm pretty sure I don't have a tin of it either. Um, but yeah. Let's see, what else do we have going on here? What is my favorite music? Uh, I mostly listen to hard rock, um, hard rock and metal, um, more like the current metal stuff. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be mostly hard rock stuff, so stuff in the post-grunge vein like Breaking Benjamin, uh, Chevelle, stuff like that. Um, I just downloaded the new 311 album that just came out. Uh, big fan of 311. Been listening to them since like 95. <laughs> um, let's see, who else? Uh, Deftones. Big fan of Deftones. Uh, I listen to you know, Kill Switch Engage. Uh, All That Remains. So, yeah, pretty much kind of the, the harder, harder stuff not a ton of, uh, what's, I guess, what's new metal, not hard rock. Like, Breaking Benjamin is definitely not new metal. Um, <laughs> they're gonna be post-grunge. Drummer for 311 once almost ran me over. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> He has got to be one of the most uh, Chevelle's new metal. I would put them in the post grunge as well. Um, and 311, I definitely would not put in new metal at all because they don't play like any metal. It's pretty much, yeah. An alien ant farm. Alien ant farm, I put in in post grunge as well. I don't think I put them in new metal. I put like corn in new metal. <laughs> um, Living Sacrifice, uh, I have not heard of them, so couldn't tell you. Um, but yeah, not a whole lot of death metal. I guess metal core is going to be kind of the higher end stuff with like Kill Switch and uh, All That Remains. I guess that's technically metal core. Uh, Kill Switch, the new, the couple of new singles that have come out sound really good. Um, I did not, I was not a huge fan of their last album. Um, but yeah, uh, once Jesse came back, I liked the first album when Jesse came back, didn't like the second one, and the new singles sound good, so hopefully they're good. Uh, Light the Torch, the, uh, uh, Howard... Howard Jones um, band. They used to be the Devil You Know. I didn't like the two Devil You Know 
albums, but the Light the Torch album is awesome. Um, so we'll see. Uh, the Last Disturbed album wasn't that good. Sound of Silence was good. I like the I like the Last Disturbed album. Um, well, the one with Sound of the Silence. I think there's a new one since then. Um, I actually saw Disturbed with Brayton Benjamin and Alter Bridge. Um, the summer after that album came out. Um, it was really good. Oh, uh, yeah, Alter Bridge. There's a new uh, Alter Bridge album coming out this year. Um, there's also a new Star Set album coming out this year, which I am very much looking for because I love their first two albums. Those, they're pretty sweet. Rob Zombie, not a huge <laughs> fan of Rob Zombie. Uh, Aromatic says <laughs> says he's been on a, crib, uh, a Creed b binge lately. That's kind of funny. Um, I'm more of an Alter Bridge guy. Uh, it's basically the same band, minus <laughs> minus the singer plus a new singer and guitar player. <laughs> Grunge died in like 95. Alien Ant Farm was big in 2001. Yeah, that's why I consider them post-grunge. Because they, yeah, but that's just my take on it. Yeah, Smiled, Miles Kennedy is probably, like, one of the best singer-guitar-player combos out there. He's definitely one of the best singers. Um, uh, I don't know if you've uh, seen the um, live album that they put out last year with the symphony. Um from Royal Albert Hall. It was awesome. It was pretty sweet. But yeah, I mean that's kind of my kind of my musical realm for the most part. I saw a song from that album live. So you saw. Oh like you saw you saw on like YouTube one of them? Old Hollywood says, My old roommate basically started the grunge era with, when he was the program director of WFNX in Boston. First guy to play Nirvana, Rage, and many other bands. WFNX? Boston. I don't even know if I know that. I know AAF from Boston because I live near Boston, but... Um, I don't know FNX. I can't, I can barely get it. I can barely get Boston stations where I live. Just barely, like, you have to, it has to be, the night has to be right <laughs> to get it. Likens picked up the PlayStation Classic last night for 20 bucks at Best Buy. Wow. I haven't had a console for a long time. Um, I think the Xbox 360 was the last one I had, um, and it red ringed on me. Um, kind of the problem with consoles is the delay on the TVs, um, and I'm really and I'm more of like a retro gamer. I love kind of like the the retro games. Uh, that come out even like like the new retro games um, like I'm a big fan of Ori in the Blind Forest I am so looking forward to the new one coming out um, Hollow Knight was exceptionally good and there is a sequel to that coming out um, what else have I played recently they be they believe pixels is a pretty sweet game um, and then I still play a lot of like Nintendo, like Super Nintendo, original NES games and whatnot on the computer because they are quick. Uh, and I have a the 8-bit dough uh, controller that looks just like the Super Nintendo controller, and it is awesome. So if you are looking for a controller for your computer, the 8-bit dough uh, SNES clone 
is spectacular. The buttons feel exactly like the old SNES. Uh, it does have two shoulder buttons though, so it does have that, and it also does have um, so the joysticks in the middle. So you do get all the regular controls, but it feels exactly like that. So um, it's pretty sweet. Um, let's see, what else? How old am I? I am... Shit, I don't know how old I am. Um, what year is it? I can't even do the math of how old I am. Uh, 30... Six. <laughs> 36. <laughs> I don't even know. Um, <laughs> ever play Tumbleweed Park? No, I have not. I am sorry. Take care, my dude. Great chatting with you. Let me know if you ever want to send me send a hat. Go for it. Um, my uh, PO box is in the uh, the about page of uh, of my channel. If you want to uh, send me, I will not complain if you uh, send me a hat. Uh, I let's see. Usually, I wear the XL sizes for most makers. Uh, I think the sixty two size in metric. Seven, uh, sorry, eight and a quarter in American sizes, something like that. Uh, Tumbleweed Park, it's a, a classic point and click, like, uh, like, uh, Maniac Mansion and, um, Monkey Island. Big fan of those games, so I will, uh, check it out. Uh, my thoughts on Meerschaums. Uh, I like them. Uh, I just don't have any nice ones. I just have one and um, it's really my wife's and she likes it. Uh, it's a church warden um, but I pretty much never smoke it. I would like to get a nice fat billiard you know or a Dublin or something but so many are just like textured and have weird designs on them so they're not really for me. I would like a smooth meerschaum that's a normal shape, but they're also really expensive when they're the size that I want. I mean, you're looking like 200 plus dollars for kind of what I'm looking for. Uh, would you want some Swamp Thang? Uh, yeah. Um, if you want to drop me some, just let me know um, so I can pick them up when they get there. Um, just because I rarely, I, I rarely check my uh, P.O. box just because it's in town. <clears throat> but they do accept packages from every one, so that's why I got that particular one. It's not a, it's a personal box, not a P.O. box, I guess. It's a personal mailbox. Um, so it's actually a shipping place um, and not a post office. So they will take packages from everybody, so that's kind of nice. Uh, classic point. Same maker. So is it, well, Maniac Mansion and... Uh, uh, Monkey Island were Lucas Arts, and I don't think they make games anymore of that style. So, are you saying it's maybe like the same producer or same director? Probably not the same um, production company, or it's not going to be Lucas Arts. Um, so the original guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like the original game designer or whatever. That 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 would make more sense. Um, <laughs> I wonder, does it still use the, uh, the scum engine? That'd be funny. Um, I love all those old scum engine games. Those are fun. Um, big fan of those types of games. There's one game that I, I don't even know why I remember this, because I never actually got the full game. I got a, way back when, PC, oh man, it wasn't PC Gamer. It was one of the other game magazines that was out in like 90, in the late 90s, mid, mid to late 90s, where you get tons of demos on a CD with every issue or whatever. And one of them was called Circle of Blood. The demo was great, but I never got the full game. So now that I just thought of that, maybe I'll find it. <laughs> Going to Texas, I'll send it after that. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, yeah, I'd like to review. I like to, um, 
yeah, if you haven't seen, I like to do as many reviews as I can blind. So I always try to get at least two of everything so I can, um, my wife goes into my humidor and picks out uh, the scars, puts a, uh, takes the band off one, puts it in a cigar tube, leaves the band on the other, puts it in a different cigar tube. Um, so I like to do, you know, all my, all my blind. So if I can at least get two, that'd be great if you want to, if you want to send me something. Um, yeah, I like to do the blind reviews as much as possible so, you know, I'm not influenced by the brand name or anything like that. Because, uh, I mean, there are plenty of cigars that cost a ton and are horrible, and there's plenty of cigars that cost nothing and are good. Um, so i rather not know ahead of time, and that way I can 100% give my honest opinion during the review and I'm just not influenced by who made it or anything like that. Um, my wife likes to try to trick me um, and uh, hopes that I give something that I really like a bad review. So far that hasn't happened. <laughs> um, I'm a big fan of a lot of the Rocky Patels. I think all the Rocky Patels that she's uh, pulled for me, I gave favorable reviews to um, so that's good um, but yeah she has she has fun trying to pull stuff to see if it's something that I've said I've liked in the past if I would change my mind if I didn't know what it was uh, luckily I have been relatively consistent so that is good um, that stuff that I've said I've liked when I knew what it was and I still liked it when I didn't know what it was um, so hopefully when I do uh, end up doing reviews because I only have like one that um, my opinions are still honest with how they go. Because um, a lot, of, I do have a lot of cigars that I only have one copy of, so those I just can't do blind because I have to take pictures of it and all that fun stuff ahead of time. So, but yeah, I try to do as many blind as I can possibly do. Um, pipe tobacco is a little harder to do that because. Um, you know, you can kind of figure out what it is right away because there's only so much of a selection. Uh, just, uh, I find there's a sweet spot for price. Uh, I like anything AJ Fernandez. Uh, yeah. This pro yeah, I think there's a sweet spot for price for the most part. Somewhere around the, well, at least the internet price of around 6 to $8, I think is probably sweet spot for the most part, though I've had plenty of sticks that cost much less than that. They're great. Um, so, you know, it just really depends. Uh, but yeah, I'd say probably the six to six to eight dollars tends to be the sweet spot for the most part. Um, I'm a big fan of like the, uh, the Onyx. Um, you really don't hear about those too much anymore. They were huge in the early thousands. Um, but they're still being made, and the Onyx, you know, Bellicoso size is still an excellent cigar, and you can probably get it for under five bucks, uh, at least online. I think boxes, boxes of those you can get as low as like eighty-four dollars for twenty. So you know, something like that. Ten to twenty for me are the best cigars. Below is a crapshoot. Above is as well. But that's Canadian, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Canadian, you're gonna have to you, you have to add basically 200 percent. So yeah, you're probably still in the same price range as me. Uh, actually, you're probably even you're actually probably a little lower in the price range. Yeah, that's probably closer to four to four to seven dollars U.S. Um, comparatively to to Canadian, because you have some crazy ass uh, taxes there. Um, Onyx. I'm not sure if you're going to find them in Canada. You might. Um, the Onyx is only one... Um, it's only one blend. I don't know who makes them. Um, so I don't know if they... Who distributes them or anything like that. Um, and yeah, you can order from the States and give it a try. Hopefully you can get it through customs. <laughs> um, I've ha I had a friend... I have. This is another viewer that uh, is in Canada, and he's had, you know, some 
uh, some luck getting stuff through customs and some not so much getting through customs. So it's been a little hit or miss. What is the biggest sin in cigar smoking? Ooh. Um, I don't, uh, well, okay. So one of the biggest sins is licking your cigar and then using somebody else's cigar cutter. <laughs> uh, licking your cigar, cutting it with your own cutter and lending that cutter to other people. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to say those are going to be two of the biggest sins. Don't do that. That's gross. Um, that is one of the reasons I never use the house cutter. I uh, always bring my own. Um, and no one else gets to use my cutter. Uh, so so uh, I'd say that is the biggest sin. Bring your own cutter, use it yourself, and don't lend it to people. There are probably a few others. Um, don't uh, don't flick your cigar to get the ash off uh, if you are not in your own house, because you can send that instead of it breaking off on the downstroke, it could break off on the upstroke and it goes flying and lands somewhere other than in the ashtray. Uh, that is a no-no. <laughs> Just. To get the ash off, just uh, break off the ash on the side of the the ashtray. Don't go flicking it. So I'd say that's probably another big no-no. And the, uh, one more, don't stamp out your cigar um, when you're done with it. Just set it in the ashtray and let it go out on its own. <laughs> so those, I would say, are probably the biggest sins. Other than that, um, you, you know, smoke the cigar however you see fit. So as long as you aren't bothering other people, uh, that is smoke however you want. But so I'd say those are those are no nos because they affect other people. Um, yeah. But banned on or off doesn't matter. You can light with whatever you want. Personally, I like to either light with wood or a torch and not with a soft flame lighter. Um, that's just me. Um, if you want to light your cigar with a candle, go for it. I don't really care. And I'm not the one that has to taste it. So, it's fine with me. That's a fun question. I'm surprised I almost went two hour. I'm almost at the two hour mark here. Um, let's see what else is there. I have so much tea. I really have to get reviewing it um, because I am on. Um, I have been getting Unan Sourcing's uh, curate one of their their premium curated tea box. And now I have like five of them that I have a ton of tea that I haven't reviewed. <laughs> so I have uh, put that uh, put that subscription on hold just because I haven't been drinking a ton of tea because it's been so damn hot. So I need to work on that. You could make a uh, comedic video out of that question. Yeah, I probably could at some point. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on my to-be-made list. Um, but yeah, with uh, with you know the the YouTube crap, um, it's been a little uh, disheartening about that stuff. So we'll see. But I would like to redo my pipes 101 videos, all my uh, cigar 101 videos, and all that stuff. So um, hopefully I'll get around to doing that at some point soon. Uh, once it starts to cool off, and then I can actually make videos. Uh, spend more time in my office here. It's amazingly, it's only gotten up two degrees in my office since I started um, because the sun is going down, so it's uh, it's cooling off in general. But I'm amazed that uh, I've managed to stay relatively cool in here and I'm not sweating up a storm, so that's good. Um, 
But yeah, so unless uh, anybody has anything else, I will probably wrap this up um, in a few. Uh, did you say you live in a barn? Uh, yes. Uh, technically, I do live in a barn. A converted barn. Um, so, uh, yeah, it used to be a barn. Now it is a house. Um, it's really nice. Uh, it wasn't a super, it's not like it was a super old barn that was built, you know, like 200 years ago. Um, I'm guessing this barn was built probably early 80s, maybe. Uh, the house that it's attached to was built in the 70s. Um, I guess I could ask the neighbors, because the neighbors have lived here forever. Um, so I could ask the neighbors when the, when the barn was built. Um, but I'm guessing probably mid-80s, maybe even as late as the early 90s. So, it's not like it's a super old barn. Um, so, yeah. It is actually made with um, rough cut dimensional lumber. That was actually the dimension of the actual name. So, the 2x4s were actually 2 inches by 4 inches, not the normal 1.5 by 3.5 inches. So, they're actually real 2x4s. Um, and then, um, like the... Uh, the rafters and stuff were actually two inch wide by, you know, 10 or 12 inches, depending on where in the barn it is. But yes, I do live in a barn. Converted barn, but no. Some of it is still rough and, um, like I have storage space that uh, we did not convert from the barn and uh, it gets hot as hell in there. Though my climbing wall is in there, but when it's 100 degrees, I really don't want to go in there, so. Right, anything else before I uh, sign off for this evening? Thanks to everybody who uh, decided to join the chat. It was really kind of last minute when I decided to to do this. So I figured, hey, what the heck? I might as well do a live stream. I haven't done one for a while. I guess I need to figure out. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I saw my phone. My phone dropped for a minute there. Uh, I guess I need to figure out the best time to um, do live streams. Um, I haven't really f figured out a good time. Try to do it on a more consistent basis. Um, maybe like once every other week or something like that. I don't know if Saturday night's the best or Sunday nights are the best. Um, I guess it's probably a, maybe that's a poll I should put up to see if uh, people are interested in a certain time or anything like that. Um, yeah. So if nobody has anything else, I'm going to call it a night. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. What I was smoking was uh, my own personal blend uh, that I made. Um, I'm going to make some videos on uh, cigar rolling at some point in the future here. Uh, I was I didn't even say what I was drinking. I was just drinking iced tea. It was uh, Da Hong Pao. Uh, you can actually see the video on how I make my iced tea. Uh, it was just a couple of videos ago, so if you can go search that out. Um, also, there is a Patreon and Subscribe Star for those of you who hate Patreon. They all have the same um, rewards, uh, so you can go check those out. Links are in my About page, um, and I will drop them at the bottom of this once it is uh, re-encoded. Uh, there's a whole bunch of tiers and whatnot. There's also a video you can watch uh, over there explaining all the tiers. Um, so. There's a whole bunch of rewards that we can do and all that stuff. Uh, if you want to send me anything, I have a P.O. box. You can find that on the About tab. Uh, I don't check it very often, so shoot me an email, which you can also find the email on the About page, to let me know you actually sent something. Uh, and that way, I actually go check my P.O. box, because it's in town, and I don't go into town very often, because I work from home. And uh, my grocery store is closer to my house than my, uh, my, my mailbox is, so... <laughs> I usually don't go farther than the grocery store, so if I need to get there, just let me know, and I will uh, check it out. Thanks for watching, everybody. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't, and uh, I'll see you next time on Tea and Tobacco. See you guys.